Simon was known for being charismatic. He opened the door for everyone, knew how to crack a joke, and could always make everyone smile, even on their worst days. There are so many stories I could tell you about Simon. I remember one time we were trying to climb a tree in his backyard. Now, neither of us are very agile, but what can I say? Simon loved the adventure. Now, once he was about 20 feet in the air, he lost his grip and fell. I was terrified that he had died, but he just popped right back up and tried again. We later found out that he got a concussion, but he didn't care. He just wanted to keep going. As he got older, you could see that drive to keep going starting to fade, but he would never admit to that. He was the strongest person I've ever met. I'll miss him. I know he's happy though. Wherever he is, he's happy. He's free. Goodbye, Simon. I love you. As a kid, I was best friends with my next door neighbor, a boy named Simon. He was sweet, outgoing, and smart, among many other things. We would spend our days running through sprinklers, selling lemonade in our front yards, and making snowmen in the winter. But as time goes on, people tend to grow apart, especially when the only thing keeping them together is location. We stopped talking for years, but I thought about him a lot. I would see him at school and wonder how he was, but I never checked in. Sure, we would exchange a wave or sometimes even smile, but nothing beyond that. In hindsight, I wish I had. Maybe my conscience would be a bit clearer. Simon, what the hell are you wearing? Just some clothes. Go change. You look like an idiot. But, Mom. I don't care about what you have to say. I don't care if all your little friends wear this shit or if it's in style. You look like a deadbeat and I can't have you embarrassing me and your father. Uh, Mom. Simon, just change your damn clothes. Your mother shouldn't have to tell you multiple times to do something. Especially something as simple as changing your outfit. Seriously, Simon, you can't be that stupid. Lucy! Hi there! How are you doing, sweetheart? Haven't seen you in a while. I'm doing all right, Mrs. Hughes. I just wanted to come over and see if Simon wanted to go get lunch with me or something. Of course he would! Si, go and have lunch with your friend. Uh, okay. Let me just change really quick. Change your clothes? Why would you do that? You look great. Go and have fun. Uh, sure. Uh, bye, Mom. <clears throat> getting someone out of a rough situation. I imagine the two of us going out for lunch, maybe ice cream after. I see us laughing over a slice of pepperoni pizza and reminiscing on old memories. We end the night back at his house where we exchange phone numbers and promise to text all the time. And we actually keep that promise. But unfortunately, life isn't always that sweet. Let me show you what actually happened that night. Simon, what the hell are you wearing? Just some clothes. Go change. You look like an idiot. But mom. I don't care about what you have to say. You look like a deadbeat, and I can't have you embarrassing me and your father. Mom. Simon, just change your damn clothes. Your mother didn't have to tell you multiple times to do something. Especially something as simple as changing your outfit. Do you ever listen to anyone? You can't seriously be that stupid. Honestly, I don't understand you. You dress like a dumbass most of the time and you can't listen when I tell you to dress appropriately? It's not rocket science. Uh, yes, Mother. I'll go change. God, he's such a freak. Grow up, Simon. I couldn't stop thinking about what I saw. That night, as I drifted off to sleep, I debated on what I could do to help. Should I talk to my mom? Maybe go see a guidance counselor at school? I fell asleep and the thought died there, but the next day, I decided to actually talk to Simon at school. It took a while to gain back the trust, but eventually, we fell into the same group we had as children. 
as if we never stopped talking at all. I'm not proud of the way I talk to my son. I like to tell myself that I'm justified in what I do because my wife does it too, but I know that this makes it worse. I sometimes go to bed at night feeling guilty for what I've done, for what I continue to do. I try to convince myself that Simon loves me no matter what, but I'm starting to lose more and more faith in that idea the older he gets. We used to be so close when he was a kid. We'd go to baseball games together and I'd buy him a new jersey every time. I remember him turning to me during the second inning of one of the games and saying to me, you're the best dad I could have ever asked for. I, I took him out for ice cream that night because I wanted him to keep believing that. As the years went on, he started slipping away from me until we eventually hit where we are now. I haven't taken him out for ice cream in years. Are you excited for the fireworks tonight? Not really. Why not? The fireworks are always amazing. Yeah, but you and I both know they're the same every year. I don't know why you get so excited. I just think they're cool, okay? Yeah, and I guess you're allowed to believe that. I don't judge you for the stupid things you enjoy. Like what? Like... Your weird love of carnivals. What? You were talking my ear off earlier today about how much you love carnivals. Like, oh Lucy, isn't this great? Carnivals are great, and I'm great, and everything is great, and blah, 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 okay, blah, Okay, okay, first of all, you need to work on your impressions. Second of all, we were literally at a carnival, so of course I was excited. That's beside the point. <laughs> no, it's literally not. You're just upset that I'm actually right about something for once in my life. Agree to disagree. Either way, my love of carnival is completely justified. Everyone knows they're the superior part of the 4th of July. Oh, no, they are not. Oh, yes, they are. Are not. Are too. Are not. Are too. Who's ready? Uh, <laughs> I actually have to get going, but I'll see you for the fireworks show tonight. See you later, Lucy. Bye. Where exactly do you think you're going? Out with Lucy. Like hell you are. Do you seriously think you can go out when you're supposed to be applying to colleges? Come on. It's the 4th of July. Application deadlines for most schools aren't until November. I don't even know what I want to do with my life yet. I'm not working on college stuff tonight. It's all I've been doing for days now. You have to deal with it. Hey! You will not disrespect your mother like that ever again. You hear me, boy? Yes, father. Damn right. Hey, Lucy! Hi, Mr. Cute. Hey, Lucy! How are you doing, sweetheart? I'm okay, Miss Hughes. Hey, Simon. Are you ready for the show? Ooh, sorry, Lucy. Simon here should put on house arrest for his uh, mother's request. Oh. Okay, well, I hope you guys have a good rest of your night. We'll see you later then, Lucy. Tell your mom I said hi. I will. completely embarrassed us in front of Lucy. How can you be such an idiot? You're lucky I don't just kick you out. This is my house after all. I cannot wait until you go to college so I don't have to deal with your bullshit anymore. Get back inside now. I decided I needed to talk to someone about Simon's situation. The only person I knew who would know what to do was my mom. So, that night, when I got back from the fireworks show, I brought it up. I kept Simon's name out of the story. I didn't know if it was my place to tell my mom about a family situation that wasn't my own, but I needed to know my options. Hey, sweetie. How was the show? Good. Simon kind of had to dip out on me, but it's fine. What do you mean by he dipped out? Did he leave you there alone? No, no, nothing like that. His mom wouldn't let him go. Now that makes sense. I thought I was going to need to have a talk with that boy about leaving young women alone with the general public. Hey, Mom? What would you do if someone you care about was getting hurt? What are you talking about? Nothing, just 
curious, I guess. Well, honey, I can't answer the question if I don't have specifics. Look, I can't get too specific, but please just trust me on this one. Well, I would do my best to be there for them. Just make sure they knew I cared about them. But, like, what if it was a parent? A parent that was hurting them? Sweetie, one of your friends is getting abused. You have to let me know so I can help them. It's not like they're being beaten. It's just words. Lucy, abuse isn't just physical. Someone can be getting abused without ever having a finger laid on them. Sweetie, you need to tell me what's wrong. Nothing's wrong. I promise. It was just a question. There's nothing for you to worry about. Thank you for your advice. I'm going to bed now. Good night. Good night. That was the first time I associated Simon's situation with the term abuse. Of course I was familiar with the term, but I didn't put two and two together until that conversation with my mom. I looked at Simon differently then. I was more careful with him, sometimes tiptoeing around conversations that needed to happen, but I'll never know for sure if those conversations would change anything. I blame my dad for the way I am with Simon. He would always say to me, Jennifer, you can't be easy on your kids if you want them to be good. You must rule with an iron fist. I guess I took that a little too much to heart. But sometimes I don't realize I'm doing it, being too hard on him. I just see it as parenting. He just frustrates me so much sometimes to the point where I boil over. My dad used to boil a lot over too. I just got used to it. I wonder if Simon is getting used to it the way that I did. I really hope it's not getting to that point. I resented my father for letting it get that far. I guess I'll never know what Simon's thinking. I can't believe you haven't made a move yet with Simon. I mean, you two are so buddy-buddy all the time, it's kind of nauseating to watch. Like, the unresolved sexual tension in the air is just makes everyone so uncomfortable. I swear to God, if there is no sexual tension, he's my friend. If the way you two act is friendly, then you and I are complete strangers. Seriously, Madison. And don't pretend like you're not part of the problem. I know you too well to not know yourselves. Oh, please, do explain. You are so easy to read when it comes to your emotions. You know you're a terrible liar. Like, you start to get all giggly and shit, and you blush whenever the person's around. And you also do this thing where you like touch their shoulder and lean into it. You don't know anything. You're just upset because you know I'm right. Okay, and what about your toes? I don't have any toes. I'm a master of disguise. And that is where you are so wrong, my friend. You have toes. Like what? Whenever you like a girl, you literally just stare at her and like bite your lip and stuff. Like, you gross, gross. I do not do that. Yes, you so do. I'm surprised your lip hasn't fallen off from how much you bite it whenever you talk to Oh, so now we're gonna bring up Morgan. Huh. That's the game we're playing? Oh yeah, we reached that point. Uh, at least I don't suppress my feelings. At least I don't suppress my feelings. Oh, so you don't deny you have feelings for Simon? I never said that. I know. That's the point. <sighs> Can we please talk about something else? I'm begging you. Okay, okay, fine. I don't think I'm letting you off the hook that easy with this whole Simon situation. Did you hear about Chase's party this Saturday? Yeah, I heard about that. Me and Simon would think of going together. What? Nothing. Friends go with friends to parties all the time. I don't see the problem. Oh, there's absolutely no problem. Just, no, if you two get a little too comfortable at that party, I'll be there to say I told you so. Good thing it won't come to that point. Besides, I doubt Simon's parents will let him go. They're very... protective. Yeah, I've noticed. What do you mean you've noticed? Chill, I just mean his mom seems like a bit of a spaz at all understatement of the century. Well, either way, we are going to that party and having the time of our lives living out our youth. Yeah, I'll just have to babysit you alone if Simon can't come. I don't need you to watch over me. I'm a big girl. <laughs> okay, but who was the one who had to hold your hair back after you took one too many shots of vodka at Luke Burbank's party last year? <sighs> Bro, that is so not fair. That was my first time drinking. Everyone throws up their first time. I don't think that's accurate. 
And how the hell would you know? You haven't touched a single drop of alcohol in your entire life. Yes, and I plan to keep it that way. Thank you. Okay, oh holy one. <laughs> You're ridiculous. A few days before Chase's party, Simon's sister, Dylan, came home to celebrate the holidays with the family. Simon was so excited to have his sister home, he wouldn't shut up about it the whole time Dylan was there. I wanted to show you a scene between the two of them. I wanted to let you know just what Simon was thinking before everything changed for good. Hey, Si. Hey. What are you up to? Just talking to a friend. Wow, I didn't know you had friends. Wow, I didn't know you had friends. Dude, what are you, 12? I don't know. Maybe you just bring out the kid in me. Well, who is this friend you're so adamantly testing? Lucy. Like, neighbor chick Lucy? That's the one. I didn't know you guys were friends. We weren't for a long time. Well, what happened? Why the sudden reconnection? I think she feels bad for me. What do you mean? Well, she only started talking to me after she saw one of Mom and I's fights. Well, I'm sure that's not the only reason. I mean, why would she put up with you for so long? Gee, thanks for the reassurance. No, I'm serious. If she didn't care, she would have left by now. Like you did? I didn't leave you. You're never home unless it's for the holidays. You know I don't come home. So you just decided it was okay to leave me here with them? Not even bothering to come home every once in a while to be like, Hey Simon, how are you dealing with getting all the heat from our parents? Pretty soon you're going to be in the same position I am. College is right around the corner for you. Just a couple more months and you'll be out of here. I don't want to wait. Sai, you are the strongest person I have ever met. You've been through so much in your life. You can make it a couple more months. There's so much worse now, Dylan. I, I can hardly even sleep without hearing her voice in my head saying, you're worthless, over and over. Simon. No, no, it's fine. I don't need you getting all emotional and shit. You're, it's fine. You're allowed to be upset about No, no, I, I have to be strong. I can't let them know they've won. Please just listen to me. I just can't take it anymore. this affected Simon. We didn't talk about his parents. I didn't feel like it was my business to pry, but watching this, I feel as though I failed him. I didn't support him. It's all my fault. I just don't get it. What's there to not get? Of all the things an elf can want to do besides make toys, he chooses dentistry? I don't understand how anyone could possibly think that working on teeth is better than being an elf. It's just a kid's movie, Bobby. It is so much more than that at this point. It's an anomaly. You're too much for me sometimes. But you love me anyways. Yeah. <laughs> I do. Oh, uh, so are we still in for Chase's party tomorrow? Is the warden gonna let you out? Oh, uh, she's been in a pretty good mood recently because of the holidays, so I'm fairly hopeful. I'm gonna ask tonight at dinner to be sure though. Yeah, I told Madison I don't want to babysit her alone at the party. Oh yeah? What'd she say to that? Some excuse about how she doesn't need to be babysat. Does she not remember Luke Burbank's party? Oh, how could she forget? <laughs> oh, classic Madison. Oh well, I should probably go before my mom has a heart attack. Yeah, of course. We wouldn't want that to happen. No. We wouldn't. Uh, I'll see you later then? Yeah, later. Uh, bye. Bye. Sorry. I always thought Simon was pretty. Not necessarily cute or hot or whatever other thing he could be, but pretty. So, naturally, I imagined a little love story between the two of us. I mean, come on, two old friends reconnecting after years of not speaking and eventually falling in love? It's a tale for the ages. Before I show you what actually happened, 
I want to live in this moment. Why not indulge myself in the story I created? <laughs> Hey, Lucy. Yeah? I had a really nice time with you tonight. Yeah, me too. Good. Yeah, that is good. Simon? Yeah? There's something I've been meaning to tell you for a while. What's up? I just don't really know how to say it without you hating me. I don't think I could hate you, even if I tried. Unless you committed some sort of heinous crime or something. Was that what you did? I bet you're on the Simon, run and- shut up for a second. I'm trying to be serious. Uh, sorry. I won't interrupt it. <sighs> okay, so? I guess here goes nothing. I think I love you. Of course you do. You tell me that every day. No, but I love you, love you. I don't understand. Like, I love you in the way that old married couples love each other. In a way where I feel as though I should be around you at all times, and when I'm not near you, I miss you. I can't express how much your friendship means to me, but I've wanted more for so long. And I don't know if it was just me, but I sort of thought we had some sort of moment earlier at the door. I don't know, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to tell you this way. I just didn't really know Lucy. how to... Yeah? I love you too. You do? I think so. What do you mean you think so? Well, I've never been in love before. Uh, but all those things that you just said about me, I feel the same about you. You make me feel safe. You make me feel as though I'm like floating. Uh, but at the same time, when I'm with you, I feel more grounded than I am with anyone else. I, I don't know if that made any sense, but that's what you do to me. You have no idea how happy it makes me to hear you say that. Uh, yeah, I think I do. Oh, well, um, I should probably go. I got calculus homework left. Yeah, of course. Have fun with those derivatives. Oh, you know I will. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Uh, hey, uh, Lucy? Yeah? I love you. I love you, too. Sweet. Huh. I often find myself daydreaming of this reality. One where we're together and happy. I picture our wedding sometimes. I see lots of shades of red and white. Lilies adorn the whole venue. It's just a wonderful sight. My mom is crying as she shakes Simon's hand. In our vows, we talk about how we fell in love. The very same conversation shown and so much more. I don't want to give up this fantasy. It's too beautiful to forget, but I never got to tell him how I really felt. So let's go back to the true narrative of the story, away from my hidden hopes and dreams. I always wanted to know where the events of the following night started. I wanted to know what caused everything to fall apart. Simon mentioned having a family dinner that night, so have to assume it was them. Uh, hey, Mom? Yes? So, uh, there's this party that Lucy invited me to go to, and I was wondering if I could go. Simon, you know my rule on parties. Yeah, I know, but uh, I haven't been to a party in so long, and, and my grades are really good, and I've got all my homework done for okay. the weekend. Okay, I hear you. Let's see what your father thinks. Well, you have been working rather hard lately. And I think he deserves a break. I say let him go. So can I go? Well, I don't see why not. Yes! Ah! Not so fast, kiddo. We need to set some rules first before you go and do something stupid. Dad, you act like I've never been to a party before. Simon. Sorry. Rule number one. You are home by 12 and no later. We all know no good decisions happen after midnight. Got it. Rule number two, absolutely no drinking, smoking, sex, drugs, any of it. When you get home, you better be clean as a whistle. You got that? Yes, Dad. Good. Do you have anything else to add? Just be safe, please. I will, Mom.
I promise. Then I think you're good to go. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, I'll be on my best behavior. I, I promise. Well, you should probably get to bed. You have a big day ahead of you tomorrow. Okay, Molly. Okay, Simon. Good night, guys. Good night. Good night. The night of Chase's party will forever be remembered as the craziest night of the year at our school. There was rumored to have been over 200 people all in one house, shouting, dancing, drinking, and smoking. All the things Simon's parents warned him about. <laughs> One dance is gonna kill ya. Madison, good for a drink? Don't mind if I do. So, uh, what do you think about taking this party to the upstairs bedroom? Oh, Chase, my love, you are so not my type. Well, I could change that. <laughs> oh my god, shut up. I know deep down you're absolutely in love with me. Can't hide your true feelings forever. Wow, you caught me red handed. <laughs> anyway, I was thinking of starting a game of beer pong in the next room. Down to enjoy? I don't know. Yes! We'd love to! Oh, sweet! Maybe in the kitchen? Yes! We'll meet you there! Maddie, what are you doing? You know neither of us drink. Come on, guys, live a little! My mom would kill me. Yeah, I think you're gonna have to count us out. Lucy, you're 17, and you have never done a single rebellious thing in your entire life. I promise, after tonight, I will never fuck you again. Just one game? Just one. Then I'm in. Yes! Lucy! Okay, fine. I'll play. Alright, let's go! Woo! <laughs> no, shut up. That was the best night of my entire life. Yeah. <laughs> we should drink more often. I doubt you'll be saying that in the morning. Maybe I'm like blind. Oh shit. What? What's wrong? It's 12.30. My, my mom's gonna fucking kill me. Simon, it's only been like a half an hour. No, she's asleep. You don't get it. You will... You'll never understand. Then tell me and we can try and figure it out together. I'm such an idiot. I, I never should let Madison convince me to play beer pong. Simon, calm down. I, I can't calm down. I, I have to go. Simon. I should have stopped him. Been more urgent. Told him that I can help. I've replayed that conversation in my head over and over again. I can't stop thinking about it. About him. I don't think I'll ever forget. Ever since I was a little kid, I've been afraid of my parents. Get back here, you stupid piece of shit! They would constantly compare me to my older sister. Don't get me wrong, I love my sister. She was the only thing keeping me sane in that house. But eventually, she moved out, leaving me all alone. Who do you think you are just leaving the house like this, especially after all you've done tonight? I'm your son, but you call me a piece of shit, or an idiot! Or whatever else you and mom throw at me, and I'm sick of it. As a parent, you should not be saying stuff like that to your own child. You will not disrespect me like this ever again. First, you come home 30 minutes after your curfew, then we find out you're drunk. You're such a disappointment, Simon. Over time, I have become numb to what they have to say about me. You will never amount to anything with the manners you have. I don't know. There was something about tonight. Get back inside before we have a real problem. No. I was never the most outgoing person on the planet. I tend to keep to myself and not do anything that causes attention to be drawn to me. And I was okay with that. I just wish I had someone. Someone to tell me it was all going to be okay. Seeing someone go through so much pain for years really changes a person. I wanted to help him. I wanted to speak up and do something, but I didn't know how. I was just a kid, after all. What could I do? 
but I don't. I don't have anyone. My sister hardly calls anymore. I don't have many friends. And the ones I do have couldn't do anything. There's no one left. So, I didn't do anything. Hoping that baby's friend was enough. There is this one girl. Her name is Lucy. I tried my best to distract him from what was going on at home. We were childhood friends. We've been neighbors since before I can remember. You're not going anywhere, Simon. Get out of my way. No. I know she's seen some of the fights between my parents and me, but she never said anything. Which is okay. I, I don't expect her to. I always debated if I should say something about what I saw. But honestly, I kind of just wished I would have talked to her about it. Get back inside, now. Maybe I actually feel not so alone in the world. But it's too late. Please, just get out of my way. Please, I need an ambulance as soon as possible. I want to be alone. It's my son. Oh, grow up, Simon. Be a man for once in your life. You first. Please, you have to save my son. Simon was known for being charismatic. He opened the door for everyone, knew how to crack a joke, and could always make everyone smile, even on their worst days. There are so many different stories I could tell you about Simon. I remember one time, when we were seven, we tried to climb a tree in his backyard. Neither of us were really agile, but what can I say? I loved the adventure. Well, once he was about 20 feet in the air, he lost his grip, and he fell. Lucy was terrified that I had died, but I just popped right back up and tried again. We later found out that he got a concussion, but he didn't care. He just wanted to keep going. As he got older, you could see that drive to keep going starting to fade, but he'd never admit to that. Simon was the strongest person I've ever met. I'll miss him. I know, he's happy though. Wherever he is, he's happy. He's free. Goodbye, Simon. I love you. We all make choices in life. We make the decision to either help or to stand by and watch, just hoping the problem goes away. I chose the latter and it did not turn out well for me. I try not to blame myself for everything that happened. I mean, how was I supposed to know? But it's hard when all you can think about are the alternatives. You know, people say 
an apology can go a long way, but sometimes an apology can come a little.